Yes. We're still in we're still in Parliament. One other thing that came up in Parliament this week, of course, um, was the appearance of the uh, EC chairperson. Now that embattled EC chair appeared before the parliamentarians to uh, essentially explain why monies that they took from us and from those who sought to replace their voter ID cards were not captured in the EC's budget. Essentially, she said it was an oversight. Watch this. The, chair, the chairperson was categorical that the amount did not find expression in the 2017 budget. And she said to us that it was plain oversight. It was just an oversight. I'm asking, when did they discover the amount was sitting in that account that was not captured in the budget? When was that discovery made? Mr. Chair, when I got the letter from Parliament inviting me to come and speak to how much we had collected for lost um, or replaced ID cards, then we, had, we requested a bank statement. And that's what I found in the bank statement is what I've come to report to the House. So you made a discovery just when you had the letter. You made a discovery just when. When the house asked her to come the and house answer, asked that's when she discovered that this was taken. Otherwise, we're not going to we're not going to discover that there are any any such amount of anyway. Mr. Chair, I'm not the entire commission. There are other people who work on this thing. I'm speaking for myself as chair. <laughs> Thank you very much. The chairman, the chairman, that is, that is very informative. Mr. Chair, please, let me explain. The chairman, the chairman, the chairman, the chairman, she says she has further explanation to that. Allow, she says she has further explanation to that. Can they allow? Mr. Chair, the way the question was couched is when did I discover? And I'm saying I, as a person, when I got the letter from Parliament, I requested a bank statement, and then what I found is what I've presented. There are other people who work within the department on this everything, so it's not a discovery matter, so to speak. They must know what is being paid into the account and what is happening there. So when you said it was an oversight, when you said it was an oversight, were you speaking for those of them who who cover that or for your, yourself? No. For myself, because I have not spoken to them yet. If you allow me, I'll go and engage the technical staff who prepared the budget and find out exactly what happened. The question was, the question was, how come that it didn't find expression in the 2017 budget? And you told us that it was an oversight. Mm -hmm. So how can you say that you're speaking for yourself? So, so other, unless I engage them, I cannot give you any other explanation. If you allow me, I can go back, speak with the technical people, and then come back to you. So, so in that case, you should have told us that you need to consult the officers in charge. What you tell us? Tell us. in this house is constituting itself into the defense force for the National Commission. I can't understand this. <laughs> Mr. Chair, because when the question was asked, how come that it didn't find expression in the budget? The response was that it was an oversight. If it was your personal oversight and not that of the commission, certainly you should have found expression in the budget. So I think the the necessary the necessary um, understanding or implication was that it was an oversight on behalf on the part of the commission. That is why it is strange you now saying that oh when you said it was an oversight, you are referring to yourself. But let me leave that. 
Mr. Chairman, the chairperson was asked a question about the procurement process. And he says um, you have to further consult. He doesn't have that uh, now. Is that my understanding? Whether the process. May I know and how, many how the services of the printers were procured? Mr. 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 Chairman, it's a different question. It's a different question. It was whether the allocation to Majority the printers leader, I were address an allotment. Yes, an allotment. Mr. Speaker, just to clarify it, what came from my deputy was whether the allocation to the printers were in allotment or how were they done? I'm asking, how were the services of the printers procured? Okay, how did I miss that? Someone must have told me, should have told me something. Anyway, so that is what happened in Parliament. I was just looking through some of the comments that are, that are coming. Uh, um, and Alex again is saying that, oh, so now I get why the EC boss said, I am speaking for myself. The question was directed to her in the capacity as Charlotte will say, not as EC chairperson. Thanks for the entire and full video. Media mischief and half truths. Okay, well, if you had watched your news, you wouldn't have this problem, uh, Alex, because we had a full, we had a live coverage, and then we had we brought you uh, the playback as well in full. Emmanuel Afo says there are great ministers' posture deters his district's directors. So that ties into the point that George you were making. Uh, well, we don't know that for sure. Maybe it doesn't. Um, Paul Hei, Hei, Hei. Okay, he says, Che Mensa Bonsu met his meter. I stand by the EC boss. What a way to now discuss the EC uh, appearance in, 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 in Parliament. I was just going to say in courts. Eddie, let me start with you. Um, first of all, let's look at the body language of the, of the electoral commissioner. Um, do you buy, by the way, do you buy that response that it was an oversight? The fact that the money was not captured in the budget. I wouldn't buy it. I mean, nobody, I, nobody in his right senses will buy it because you spent some monies, the the expenditure for the year. You should let us know where you got certain monies from and how you spent it. So that is just by putting the figures in there. She could have avoided going to parliament to go and face this huge. I think mm. it was an embarrassment of a sort. Um, facing the MPs and telling them what she told them. That it was an oversight? That it was an oversight. Or you, if you make a mistake, you admit that you made, you made a mistake and then you move on. Isn't that a good thing? Well, this is money. You're talking about how you spent the taxpayers' money. You should have been a bit uh, succinct and, I mean, paid more attention to how, how money spent in the, in the commission mm. were, were, were put to use. Now, I think that well, I would have blamed the finance officer or whoever put the budget, budget together, but the back stops are the... With the, with the chair, exactly. with the easy and chair, you are because the you are the boss. Everybody will call for Salota Say's name because obviously you are the head. They don't know about the finance officer. They don't know about whoever put the budget mm. together. So she should have been a bit... Um, mm should have paid mo much that more doesn't attention. Doesn't that, enforce, that is, doesn't that enforce her complaints? I mean, some of the complaints that we've heard about how uh, the, the people she was supposed to be working with are not making life easy for her at the Electoral Commission. It then supports the fact that, well, they're not willing to work with her after all. Well, from what we've seen over the last two weeks, we can say that there's a deep-seated cracks or divisions within the EC. Now, as the EC chair, she has two deputies, deputy in charge of administration and I think finance, and then mm. deputy in charge of operations. She was in parliament with deputy in charge of operations, Amadou Sule. Right. Now, we didn't have Georgina Opoku there, who mm. is deputy in charge of administration. Well, she's on leave, isn't she? No, she, she's been asked to proceed on leave. Yes, so she's on leave. Well, <laughs> but this is information that Charlotte Osei could have gotten from any of the officers there. She had information, but she could have also told them to include 
the money they took from journalists. So, but she said it's an oversight. I mean, it's an oversight. They did not realize that it wasn't there until the until Parliament invited them. Well, if them, she were to be a doctor, she, somebody would have died. Would have already. died. Would yes, have died yes. by now. So it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. I wouldn't take that. Okay. This is money, and money. Ghanaians are very uh, careful when it comes. Not to just money. Ghanaians. In fact, Ghanaians are actually uh, very. Uh, they are cautious. They, they, cautious. Not, money not, cautious. Not, no, 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 <laughs> not, not so much. I know uh, well, there are some countries that are. Uh, that don't, don't joke with money at all. Yeah, so I think that, that they are pepe, but it was it was <laughs> it was bad to have omitted that. Mm. It, it's a critical information. She should have included it because if you look at the kind of um, um, rejection that came with the announcement that journalists prior to the 2016 election were, we're going to we're pay, going to pay yeah. for ID cards. Mm -hmm. This is something that that has never happened before, mm. and people were concerned okay why why are you taking money from journalists yeah. i mean they are the people going to get information and they are going to put it out there for the public yeah. to know yeah so why would you want to charge journalists but she justified it she loved it she it makes her it. happy she and she took the money <laughs> <laughs> so that's very sarcastic <laughs> of you eddie well but anyway <laughs> so, so i think that it is it is not something she should have omitted and that's i wouldn't take it that's not an excuse. Okay, so before we do body uh, body language, just uh, let me bring you in on your thought about buying whether or not you buy the fact that the oversight bit. Well, I I equally don't buy, and I don't even think it is true. But to be fair to her, you don't I think it's as true. As a general, I don't think she was the first to ask journalists to pay. 2012 election, she was asked to pay some money, even though the GJ did we pay. In the GJA came in with uh, other media organizations. They, they paid they on so, so I'm aware of something like that. So that the, the GJA the paid for Ghanaian for, for for journalists? Maybe some journalists. But some the journalists. idea of paying for the coverage didn't start from Charlotte. Yeah, uh, well, I think that, when that he I'm says, sure what, what, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that when you say it's a, it was a was first time, you meant that it was the first time that they actually as, as proposed it well, okay. and collected the, the money collected directly. The well, so, 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 so the 10 cities was even those who were members of GJA. Yeah. Mm. And then I think GIBA. GIBA, GJA. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So if you are not a member of GIBA, you are you not a member of GJA, you are going to pay 20 cities. They Back to your question. Mm. I, don't, I don't think that it was an oversight. Just that because of the issues there she wasn't on top of the issues mm -hmm. there's a director of finance and the money is that journalist paid would have gone in there and there is no finance officer who will not make entry of whatever money that gets mm. into the organization mm. it's part of the principles of accounting uh, which i'm sure probably we've all learned accounting before but we are not here to do accounting. i haven't but you see <laughs> Charlotte's approach, sorry, Mrs. Uh, Charlotte says approach. Right. <laughs> For me, it raises so many questions. Her approach? Yes, before Parliament. Okay, you want to talk about the body language? Yes. Very well. When President Akufuado met journalists mm. his first uh, six months, I'm sure he had the capacity to answer all questions, <laughs> but he referred some questions to his appointees. Mm. And, and we'll just, okay, so those are pictures from Parliament uh, previously. And you could just, you know, for yourself, look at the body language, you know, between Madame Charlotte Ose and, of course, uh, Amadou Sule, who is uh, one of the deputy commissioners there. So please go ahead. The president, the uh, his record, has been on the political limelight for a very long time. Mm. He could have spoken to all the issues. But he asked the vice president and some other appointees to respond. I'm sure he would have talked of how President Mahama used to do his. He will speak, and he had issues all on top of. He was on top of the issues. He spoke. So probably he would have uh, considered comparing himself to uh, President Mahama, but he chose to go that style, which mm. for me is very brilliant. You cannot have everything at your you disposal. You don't know it all. You cannot know it all. And we are talking of information. These days, whatever you say, somebody can say somewhere and verify. Mm -hmm. Mr. Amadou Sule was sitting by her. And Sule, I mean, as journalists, we know the guy knows a lot of stuff there. I'm sure she could have answered that. But you, you mean that he has been at the, at the commission for a very long time? Much longer and than he's she has. in charge of operations. So some of those things, he wouldn't have dealt with them for the first time. He's 
either dealt with them directly or indirectly in the past and probably could have done a better job. But because of the tension, if you want the friction between the two of them, she didn't have that, uh, he, let me say, humility to consult, to, consult about the to, 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 to answer but, but some of see, the But we, we can't pretend. We can't pretend like everything is okay. We know that there are issues. There are serious issues there between them. There are supposed them. to be issues. When you are working for an organization, you are not supposed to be friends in order to work. In public sector organization, there are clear down rules and regulations. I don't need to like you to be able to work with you. Mm. And the fact that I don't like you doesn't mean you should bring out something which is within your remit. I would uh, say I will not sign. No. But but Mr. 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 Madusuli was also there. If he thought at a point that he had better information, it was the commission that was appearing before Parliament. So if he thought that he had better information, he could just have said, whispered it to her. I mean, you don't you don't need to let her come to you for that information. From her response, mm -hmm. you get the impression that when she got the invite, she didn't consult them for any information. That's something that you know you don't know for sure. No, but we are just talking based on the response there. Okay, given. like like Another I point can speak she was for like, myself. Yeah, I can speak for myself because there are other commissioners who are engaged in other things. Eddie, are and you so on the same page with him? I'm on the same page. I, I think that the EC commissioner or chairperson has been very consistent in her demeanor and approach to questions posed to her. Mm. Prior to the 2016 election, I'll take you back, forgive me, I'll take you back just a little bit. 2016 elections, when she, she was launching the logo, we mm. spoke about the logo concerns, why do you want to change the Ghanaian-ness of the logo to something we didn't know. Some people even called it Koliko and all that. <laughs> this woman went ahead and launched it. Now, in launching the logo, the kind of questions posed by journalists, she parried some of them, she answered some of them, and she was consistent. She, wa she wanted people <coughs> to know that she was a tough lady, fearless, and she was standing by whatever she was saying. Now, that but is the same... Is that the sense you get, or that... Because it, c it can't necessarily be the reality. If she believes that... I mean, she's giving you reasons that justify the decision that she took. It's not because she, she wants to be firm, necessarily, but because she has justification. Wouldn't you rather see it that That's way? what I'm saying, that Charlotte say, Mrs. Charlotte say, over, uh, she's trying to be consistent. Okay. She wants to let people know that she's tough. So there's a certain she's trend in, yes. in the way she responds. If you do a trend analysis mm. of looking at her posturing, answering questions, not just this one, yeah. but even when people were trying to, even political party leaders right. trying to submit their documents. and all, she, she has this posturing of okay. trying to be very tough, appear to be very tough and fearless. So that she's been consistent. I'll congratulate her on that. But when it gets to where you have to calm down and talk to your subordinates and get information, it is very crucial. You have to do it. And that she failed. Mm -hmm. That is why she was telling the, the majority leader in parliament that she can speak for herself. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to go back to the office and go and verify from then the I'll other go back and technical come back officers. Later. Meanwhile, the director of operation, whose lap this information you are looking for falls on. In fact, the officer you are going to speak to reports to the director of operation, who was just sitting by you, or commissioner of operations, who was just sitting by you, Amadou Sule. You could have just asked, um, I mean, whilst the discussion were ongoing, you could, we have situations yeah. where people appear before parliamentary select committees they they try to go with their lawyers their lawyers are sitting mm. by them before mm. you when you pose the question then you just but he's not amadou sule is not a salad or says lawyer well <laughs> in certain situations like this one she could have been he could have been a lawyer by they could have consulted uh, he she could have consulted him george was but nothing stopped yes george, george was talking thing. about how president Kufuado answered questions from journalists she, he, he he wasn't he wasn't okay speaking about certain issues on the economy so he says the vice president is here i think he can do a better job vice president vice president comes in mm. he appears to have the the details he speaks to the issues and it, we find out that what he's talking about mm. is very conk it, but, I the, mean, but the vice president could have easily whispered into the president's ear when the, if the president made a statement or if the vice president realized that the president needed some kind of crucial information he could have easily whispered it into his ear. We didn't well, see Amadou Sule do that. Amadou, could have. Amadou Sule and Charlotte Sule have issues. Exactly. Now, what we are saying is, if even you have issues in the full glare of the public, mm. you could have asked Amadou Sule, yeah. do you have the information? You are dispelling the rumor yeah. or that perceived tension between the two of you.
Okay. There and then, people will see you on camera that, oh, you're having a tete-a-tete. They, well, they, are, they are interacting. Well, there is that, that relationship is not there, obviously. <laughs> it's not yes, there. Yes, so that tells you, I'm saying that Charlotte say, being the leader she, she's supposed to be, mm -hmm. could have come down to the level of Amadou, who is the deputy, okay. and asked the question. All do right. you have any information on that? And I think it's not bad to, to, to do that. The president displayed that, and, and, and he, he, he succeeded in a way by making people understand the issues better, with, with, with the vice president coming in to speak about the economy. So if Charlotte say you are, they pose the question to you and you don't have the answer, you go to your director of operations, who is in charge of operations, who knows everything mm. at the commission. So in she fact, could have done better. Don't forget that Sule Amadou was there before Charlotte say came. Okay. And perhaps should have more information than Charlotte say. I see. Okay, so it, uh, quite apart from that, what do you see, wh what are your thoughts about the body language, her body language? I mean, um, uh, this is the, the, the electoral commissioner who is answering questions, and this is an embattled electoral commission, uh, uh, chair of the electoral commission. There's, an, there's a petition that's seeking to get rid of him, uh, get rid of her. So bear that in mind. People have, people in, you know, initially have said all kinds of things and drawn the majority into it and said that there's actually uh, a certain, that there's a, an upper hand at work trying to remove her. So all of these things are at play. And then you have this, the, the, this, this woman come to sit in parliament. What do you say? Uh, what are your impressions about her body language, her posture? I think Charlotte Osei is a cool and collected, calm, collected man, a uh, woman, sorry. She, she always wants to get, to give that, I mean, posturing to you, mm. to let you L know so that. So let's speak to this particular video. Uh, okay, so. Charlotte is a bit sometimes very sarcastic in her ans answers. Okay. She, she wants to, I said it earlier, she wants to appear as a very tough lady. Mm. She wants to assert her, to her, her authority. Her authority. Like. And wants to stay by whatever she says mm. so that you don't see that she's inconsistent with information. I see. She is trying to be consistent. I'll, I'll That's end it how you see she, it. I see her okay. to be George. a lady who is trying to just be consistent. George, consistency. She wants to paint a picture to the public, and mm. she has succeeded in painting that picture. That okay. she's a very tough lady. And she held on to it at, at exactly. in Parliament. I mean, you, you saw the, we, the logo, we love it. <laughs> it makes us happy. We picked it. <laughs> okay. George, well, I, I what do you make of it, her body? I language? don't have a problem with her style. That's her style. And provided her style will enable her to provide the information we want, I have no problem with that. Is that her style? Okay, so when she says, like, if you want us to bring, if you want, if you, I can, I can always check with the, check with the, let's say, check with the, other, with the staff and get back to the house and brief you. Um, I'm answering for myself. But that I mean, is sarcastic. The, the sarcasm. For me, I don't, I don't think so. I rather think that she, she, she was uh, deficient in leadership qualities there, which, for, of course, we can forgive her. She can't have it at, I mean, all times. So for that angle, she, she lacked something. I'm sure when you have the opportunity of heading the electoral commission, at the time she came in, mm -hmm. taking over from Dr. Farijan, who was a lecturer, an experienced guy, and I mean, you, you saw how Dr. Farijan handled issues. You'll be there and he'll move out and take his seat there and come back and those things. <laughs> he was a tough man. Okay, well. This lady <laughs> takes over. She is torn between being a leader and a manager, and she needed to do the two. And so combining the two, the conflict will certainly come out. Is it but her ability to manage or the inability of other workers or people at the EC to work with her? That is the conflict. If you are a leader, you need to take tough decisions. Right. Most of which will not be, 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 be very good to your subordinate. Very if right. you are a manager, you need to maintain the status quo, make everybody happy. And okay. so she's torn in between the two. I see. But she is... The overall ball. If there's a problem, we will contact Mrs. Yes, Mr. And Mr. not, yeah. Okay, okay. It's interesting, but that story, of course, is still developing. 
uh, we'll see. Now, we know that the president has forwarded that petition to the uh, Chief Justice. That has been a conversation that we've had uh, uh, extensively uh, this week. And so we'll see how it all pans out next week. In fact, there have been calls for the two deputy commissioners to step down uh, or to step aside so that the investigations can, can, can go on. There has been another petition about those two deputy commissioners. So it's all a cocktail that's in the making, like I said last week. So we'll follow up and see how it goes. But we're going to take a very quick break. When we return, we've got one more issue to do uh, to deal with from Parliament. That will be the Ameri deal. We'll touch on it briefly, really. And then we'll look at free SHS. And then we'll look at whether or not we should recruit party supporters over others who are not party supporters when it comes to recruitment. Of course, they help you to win power. And they believe in your objectives. That's the, po the position of the MPP. We'll be right back. You're still watching Editor's Week. Unraveling the complex issues with tough questions, connecting you with those who make the news and those behind the news. Together with you, we get upfront. Upfront with Raymond Aqua. Wednesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. on Joy News. regions, 216 districts, countless communities. There is still more to discover, more voices to be heard. And because the road is not good, no car can pass. Then they, they rob everybody of whatever you have. Even sometimes they brutalize you in addition to the robbery. Like they're being beef. We send it to market, no marketing. He was riding his motorbike and a dog crossed him. A dog? A dog. Really? Yes. yes. The predominant name for this community now is Chen Cheng Kura. At the Setra East Oil Mill, and I'm here with her drawing. Join Sarah Abla the Souza on My Community, Saturdays 5 p.m. and Sundays 3.30 p.m. My Community, your voice. Welcome back to the show. Uh, once again, let me take you through the uh, comments that are coming on Facebook. And uh, we saw, uh, when I'm done with that, we'll wrap up our conversation. Eddie has uh, uh, one or two uh, additions, you know, to make on the Electoral Commission's brouhaha. And then we'll try and deal with our Mary. Uh, we'll try and deal with our Mary uh, shortly. So, um, where did I get to? Daniel Atta. Daniel Atta says, Gifty, when problem casts a shadow, we fold our arms and cross our legs until it dawns on us in respect to the fall army invasion. The minister is doing window dressing. What is, the, what is window dressing? I'm sure I'll get the explanation later. Chris Amponsasaki says, Gifty, good or bad performance is always measured against some form of standard or against industry indices. With regards to the fall army worms, we are told it's also affected and destroyed many farms in western, eastern, and southern Africa. So let's measure our performance in how far we have dealt with this pest with countries within those regions. It's only after that we can say whether we are doing bad or good. Let's not condemn the efforts of the Agric Minister. Point well noted, Chris. Cecil Kwabana says, when you get a new job, you see how the old staff gang up against you? It's whether you play the corrupt ball with them sure. or they sabotage you till you find your way out. That's how I see Charlotte Osei's case. Cecil, your points well made. Paul Hehei again says, majority can't intimidate the EC boss. Didn't these MPs make mistakes every day? Or you mean don't? Is Charlotte Osei a superwoman? No. Did she commit any crime? No. Please leave the woman alone. You can't intimidate her. Paul again says, as for the Greek minister, he thinks he knows everything because he's PhD. His staff are afraid of him. He is bound to fail when his workers continue to be afraid of him. Alex says, this how this show ma must I say, oh, must be air live. I, I think you're saying it should be aired live on Facebook uh, since next week you miss it. Okay, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, which one is the body language? Do you want Charlotte Osei to be laughing with glee <laughs> at Amadou Sule and Dojino Pokwa Mankwa as if the EC boss is not human? She is. She has feelings. Leave the woman alone. 
Good efforts and nice in your outfit, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, Muktari Muha, Maha, Mahama Ferry. F Prince Tahiru Wayam says from Cherponi. Says the back and forth of the Agric ministers declaring early victory for army where many was misplaced and total goof. But creating the impression as if all that was said was lies and insults on our gallant farmers is what I considered very unkind from your panelists. At least some gains were made on the fight. In this case, the media failed to highlight the good part of it, but chose to bite okay, bite in the ills. Uh, free SHS is good, but watch out. Those in villages who normally score ag uh, aggregate 25 and above won't go to school. Calamity awaits us. The point that the, the um, prince from Treponi makes is that there has been some good work done. There has been some efforts made to deal with this. And that we, the media, we in the media, have highlighted on the negatives rather than on the positives. It depends on how you are measuring that. <laughs> if you are spending <laughs> 20 million CDs, Ghana CDs, on something, and the impact is about uh, maybe what 10,000 CDs can do, you don't expect us to clap for you. Okay. All right. So, well, we've got a very quick response to that. Let's finish up with uh, Parliament so that we can move on away from there. We have less than 30 minutes to wrap this up. Um, Eddie, you were, you were making a point about uh, what when we went on the break about calls for the minister, uh, for the chairperson of the Electoral Commission to step aside for the investigations to, to go on. Please go ahead with it. I, 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 will, I, will, I was saying <coughs> that um, calls for her to step aside is not founded in law because um, the Constitution is quite clear as to how we should go about it. Mm. A petition has been given to the president. The president has forwarded it to the chief justice. Right. The chief justice then sets up what a panel that sits on the case. Mm. They report back to the chief justice. And I mean, the, 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 the processes are clear. Mm. So where from the calls by some civil society groups that Charlotte say should step aside? I'm not the biggest fan of Charlotte say, <laughs> if you ask <laughs> my <laughs> colleagues at work. But I think that these calls are premature and we, we, we should not be encouraging such calls. Okay. One of such calls is coming from IDEC. Mm. And we know the person here in IDEC. Dr. IDEC Dr. Akwete. Dr. Imano Akwete. And Dr. Right. Imano Akwete, we know, have, have some interest at EC. If you say he has a interest, an interest in the EC, what, exactly what do you mean? Well, he was one of the names that came up well, uh, the fact that he's for the positions of chairperson for EC. So, But the, but the fact that he's a name that came up doesn't make him... Uh, an interested party per se. It, people well, can always put your name out for He, he has been very critical of the EC chair, talking about certain... We are, we are not saying that you shouldn't criticize the mm. EC chair if she's doing something wrong, but she's, uh, he's been consistent with how the operations of EC have mm. gone, criticizing it. That's fair enough. But your name has also come up, or your name came up prior to the selection process for mm. who should head EC. So you don't come in and come and poo-poo into the thing and say that issue a statement that Charlotte says should step aside. If that for you is not founded in law. It's not founded in law. And they are trying to win a, a public opinion war against the EC chair. When and you say they, who are you to I mean, those who are using those subtle moves by saying that the woman should step aside. And if she, she makes a mistake by stepping aside, mm -hmm. what will then happen to her is that She's lost the public opinion law um, war. It means that people are going to say, "Okay, well, it, it meant she, that she, she, oh, she knew she did. You something knew that wrong you did something anyway. wrong. Just like um, um, Madam um, Jifa Ativo mm. once said that. I mean, after the the, the issue she had with the bus branding uh, mm. case, she stepped aside by herself, and people said, "Okay, it means that she's uh, she's guilty of um, stealing state money." You know, without necessarily going, taking her through the process. That's what I'm, I'm saying. If Charlotte says she step aside, people will, will conclude then that, okay, it's true. That okay. you did something wrong. That is why you are stepping aside. Mm. And for um, um, Dr. Emmanuel Akwiti to make this call, I think it's, it, it was a wrong it move. was a bad, bad taste. Okay. Well, let's look at the merit deal. I, 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 unless, of course, you have something to say to this. Well, basically, I have to say that uh, there are two things. If criminal intent is involved, then all of them should step aside mm. when the investigation starts. But if it's mere allegation of impeachment, there's no need asking anybody to step aside. We just have to go through the process. Remember, we have critical, ele crucial elections to have. 
local well, government level elections. Well, that's another big issue because then the people, a lot of people are worried about the credibility at this point of the of the electoral commission. Now, with all of these elections coming up, etc., people are wondering what can be done. Will the electoral commission save itself? Uh, and one of the questions I actually wanted to ask was whether or not the media can help in saving the EC or bringing back the credibility. If, if you know how the EC operates, if you are for the chairman or chairperson of the commission, you can't manipulate anything. It's a system. IPAC plays a very important role. So I think at this stage, IPAC should be given a legal status. You can't manipulate anything there because you don't have it all. You don't have the power to do. But it's the public there. opinion, Eddie. You you refer to that. It's the public opinion. What the public confidence in this organization? Lots of people have said that this issue, what is happening recently, has actually exposed a lot of things that perhaps we should have known earlier about the electoral commission about what the way we things happen, as a people happen in Ghana? there. We've criticized virtually everything. But we've not seen anything like this. At you the criticize them, the problem existed, they've conducted elections from 1992 till date. In Africa, our commission remains one of the finest. Which is why we are all worried about this particular issue and the we impact are it will it have came out. on that. Yeah, yes, it's so, it's, so if it came out, it means that it was there. So it's an issue that perhaps had to be dealt with. Otherwise, then it jeopardizes this thing that we've held uh, in such high esteem that, you know, we go boasting around all over the all over the Scholars world. Scholars the world over agree when you go through the literature, when it comes to elections, you cannot have perfect elections anywhere. Okay. There will always be problems with election. There will be elements of cheating. But to the extent that the cheating does not prevent the intended winner from winning, it is okay. <laughs> Don't forget that's that a, the, that's the, a, that's the, a debate. <laughs> the Constitution makes provision for an interim body to handle elections if okay. we have such cases leveled against the current leadership of that the EC. And some, I've heard some people make comments, like my, mm -hmm. <laughs> my brother here, saying that it will affect the, um, I mean, elections, that is, we, we, the one yeah. we're going to have in 2018, the local level elections. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I think it's laughable to say that because the EC has an organogram that operates. Even without a chair, they will have the elections and won't, have, won't see any, won't have issues with it. Really? Yes, I think that we sometimes, we sometimes give too much credence to some of these issues that we think that it will affect the... You no. think it won't affect Not No, it won't affect. I see. affect. Okay. I see. They will have the elections and then... I mean, the chairperson is the returning officer for the general elections, mm -hmm. but not for um, uh, local level operations. elections. I mean, those small, small elections. I see. All right. Well, let's look at Ameri the Ameri deal so that we can wrap up uh, what's happened in Parliament this week. Now, in the, with the Ameri deal, with, we understand that former ministers are being homes of former ministers are being are being searched uh, at the moment now um first was the power, former power minister dr kamna donko and then john Junapo, and then a, a technical advisor to the minister also had his laptop taken you know their phone his phone actually didn't give out his phone they took his the serial number of his phone etc things like this that like this are happening and of course in parliament they're not very happy in fact, one of the things that I forgot to talk about was the fact that the parl parliamentarians, the minority in parliament, think that the, the Speaker of Parliament is being biased. And it's, it's part of, you know, uh, the conversation they had after the, a Greek minister appeared in parliament, what happened after Madame Charlotte Osse went there. Now with their married deal, they are asking the, men, the, the Speaker to do something about it because they think that members of parliament and those in the minority are, are being harassed. It has to do with their married deal. First of all, they're trying in, in, in Parliament to um, do something to that particular agreement, to rescind that uh, agreement so that, uh, because there has been concerns that it's been over bloated. The amount that we paid was, of, was about 510 million that we could have had it for much less. So this is a very, um, if, you, if you ask me, lots of pieces that you need to put together. Let's deal with the search the, the the police searching the houses of former ministers and former people who worked at the Ministry of uh, of, of, of Power and Energy. Is the media blowing this out of proportion? Because we always talk about allowing institutions to work. The police officers go there, they show their search warrants, they search the homes. It isn't, the, isn't it a simple uh, issue of the institution working, the system working? Sometimes I think the media try to be alarmist about certain cases because um, when politicians are in their 
<laughs> the officers signing huge contracts and then sharing the monies. They will never call the media. Be careful. Sharing, sharing which court. money? <laughs> <laughs> well, sharing which money? I, I won't follow you to court. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying this because sometimes politicians use journalists to, as a cover-up mm. and to blow certain things just so we forget about the, the, the main issues. Mm. For example, the minister of power had his house raided. Well, that, that's another problem because there have been concerns about raided? the way we've used the word raided. That did they, we say did raided? They, yes, that's what everybody and seems that, to be that saying. Is, that, is, that is gutter journalism. I'm, I'm sorry. It is sensationalism. What is raided? Delta Force raising your, raiding your house. <laughs> I mean, the uh, Delta Force, in, I mean, the real sense of Delta Force in US, they, can, they go on raids. Not what is happening in Ghana. I think that we sometimes overblow certain issues just to get it. It's good. I mean, it's sometimes sensationalism sell, but we should be very careful not to be used, not to be used as um, conduits by politicians. Mm. First of all, I've heard um, the minority in parliament saying that the, 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 the police going to the house is, the is member of parliament. Yes, it's against Article 122, which is obstruction of a member of parliament's duty. That is quite interesting. In the morning at 6 a.m., the member of parliament was going to parliament? I think the, uh, I think the, the article also provides a, ti a certain time frame to it. And yesterday on Newsfire was one of the things that they talked about. And um, Himani Africa's vice president, um, Kofi Bento, for instance, says that that law is medieval and that the things that it's sought to do at the time, it it's doesn't really apply to our times. And so perhaps we should have another look, another look at it. But then again, it doesn't take away the fact that you're going to people's homes to search. I mean, you can invite them. Can't you just invite them and, and, well, and, maybe and get the information? Well, maybe perhaps the kind of information they are looking for, they will need to go to the person's house. But I think that the police, what the job they are doing uh, is quite laughable because if somebody has left par mm -hmm. for the at least more than six months, you think the person will keep documents, such sensitive documents Some in his may. house? Some may. Well, they do photocopies of such documents, and they may want to keep them. But as to whether they'll keep them in their houses, I doubt. Okay, so you don't think that even going to their house is was something that it would give the police any information they could it work It was a with. wrong move. I, I see. And George. the minority coming on hmm. Article 122, I thought it was also a wrong article to come on. They should have used Article 117. That talks about the obstruction of the MP's duty when he's on his way to Parliament. Okay. Perhaps that one would have been a bit justified because he was he was trying to leave the house to go to Parliament, right? Yes. So, in 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 those two scenarios, I'll say one, the going to the house by the police to search the house. Mm -hmm. I think they wouldn't have even found anything because nobody will keep documents, such documents, in their houses. For what? You will surprise us some will. Well, I I wouldn't keep such documents in my house. I see. W w George, what are your expectations of how this will end? I mean, it's been the power minister, now it's been the deputy uh, 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 energy minister, uh, John Junapo. The, 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 the ministry and a technical advisor to the ministry's house was also searched. The list, it appears that there's a list. W w what, what are it's your expectations? For me, it's, 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 it's a big problem. And for me, that is a, it's a joke of how we investigate things in this country. If I have personal documents mm -hmm. and the process went through parliament and parliament uh, approved it, mm -hmm. whether consensus or you say parliament approved it, and you want documents formal, are you going to rely on what I have personal documents or what, or what the states, the representatives of parliament approved? That for me is basic. And the approach used by the police, for God's sake, you, you, you went and searched uh, the boss's own house, yeah. Dr. Akwamna Donko, yeah. about a week or more later. So you think if the deputy... You'll be keeping the, 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 the No, no, no. <laughs> even if... Even if so, so the point is that if you went to the boss... Yes. And you it's went to... You yeah. went, so, so, so if there's People anything to be, to be hidden, 
at the deputy minister's house, he would have gotten rid of it already of before he get there. Common sense will tell us that he will <laughs> not keep it there. I mean, see, look, the deputy minister is, is a young guy. I mean, I'm sure he's friendly when it comes to ICT. Mm. <laughs> there are better ways of storing things, confidential ways of storing than to keep it on pen drive. Keep it on Google. You think you keep sensitive things on your pen drive or hard drive? Actually, some people, you know, some even in even at the letter commission, there was an oversight. I'm talking of those <laughs> who know what ICT is, and okay. I'm sure. Uh, is it Jinapo, Abu, uh, one? John Jinapo. John John Abu is the deputy. I'm uh, sure CG Abu alone should know something about ICT. John Abu. Yes, and wouldn't keep those things if indeed they are that sensitive. But I mean, apart from keeping, not keeping, keeping or not keeping sensitive information available so that the police can have any information to work with, do you see this as a political witch hunt? I don't think so. You see, the problem sometimes we have in this country is the police. They put the politicians in trouble. Really? Yeah. You are supposed to investigate something. The law is there. These are members of parliament. You can write to the speaker. And the very fact that the speaker is inviting the security chiefs mm. tells you that there was something wrong, even okay. with the court brief. So the police went about it in the wrong way. And I think the police, uh, sometimes, it, it, it's, 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 it's surprising the way. There are lawyers there. There are learned guys there. But once you get the impression, if it's about politics, you mm. go and do it and create the impression that the government or the party is doing it. That's because For instance, when the president asks the police, country. deal with any criminal who flouts the laws of the land, a day or two, some people go out to misbehave, and because they are aligned to the ruling party, the police will not arrest. Okay. And people are blaming the president. Very He's right. told you to arrest them. Okay. So the police this are this our mm. problem. The, the Let's wrap up on our thoughts on, on, on the Meridian when yes. so we can the police do the very, they be, The police, they become very jittery as mm. soon as there's a change in government. Now, those who are in to please their paymasters, mm. um, <laughs> paymasters advised to be used, those mm. who are in to, I mean, satisfy their paymasters, mm. are always seen to be doing something just to satisfy them. Right. Now, the documents about um, a Mary, because it was approved by parliament, should be with parliament. Mm. The hazard would have captured it. You go there, you get the information about it. I don't know the kind of information they were searching for at the ministers of um, deputy ministers' house mm. and that of the, uh, the 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 minister of power, former minister of power, powers uh, powers house. It was a wild goose chase because they w I'm sure they wouldn't see anything. And if indeed you needed some documents on it, it the, the best way you go about it is to go to Parliament. Okay. Because that is where the document was approved. All right. Well, away from Parliament, and it's, we'll definitely, they'll, they'll be sitting, of course, next week. And so we'll still get some more from, from Parliament. Those are the things that need follow-up. We'll, we'll, we'll get to know. We understand that the IGP is set to appear, of course, in Parliament as well, uh, because the, the Speaker has invited him. We'll also see about that, and we'll get some more information on that. Well, we have a few minutes to wrap up. I'm trying to, see, I mean, let's try and fix this. Let's try and deal with this two, this, well, we have three more. Well, let's see what we can do. Free SHS, is it free for real and for all, or a scholarship scheme? Uh, this week, we know the me education minister met the media and explained certain things. And some media houses have reported that the policy won't even cover students who repeat. I'm wondering whether it is clear to my panelists what we are in for. Is it, George, to you, free SHS? Is it <coughs> free, as in what the president said when he explained in details what free meant, or this is a scholarship scheme? The policy paper I have here. Okay. Well. And uh, it, it, what has been captured is not what the president said. And so Give for us me, the it is not entirely free. Mm. The president says, for instance, that every Ghanaian child, and he has been passionate about it. When he talks yeah. about the fact that basic education should, should, should end at the secondary level, mm. that should be the least when it comes to terminal. Mm. And if that is the case, then you should have a way of getting all the children to that level. When they write the WASI and fail, then they would have decided to terminate at that level. But per this document, that is not what we see. We see. What, what, what in the document makes you... First of all, let me go through what I have here. Just a brief of what it entails. Now, they're saying that they're going to be paying the five C, a 5 CD PTA levy so that 
parents won't have to be burdened with that amount. Uh, they'll be feeding for day students. They're looking at equity, quality, and employable skill education is what they're going to provide. They're looking at teacher motivation fees. The, by the way, funding has not yet been received from the finance ministry. Um, even though the World Bank has promised some $40 million support, I'm not sure if they have received it. I don't think so. There's going to be a 42 model schools uh, that will be constructed. And of course, as long as, w in terms of qualification, as long as you're a Ghanaian, you sit for the BEC and you pass and you are placed by the computerized system, that's it. But again, the caveat here is pass, right? Yes. I, after the presentation, I had the GEA Director General in my studio. Okay. And we talked to some of these issues. The fees are there. I am an optimistic, an optimist. Mm. We should expect problems, but we should go ahead with it. Okay. But the way they are telling us I have problem, there will be serious challenges. Look, these are the list of fees that government has absorbed. Absorbed, okay. Yes. So if I could borrow your documents yeah, here, we'll have... 12 of them. Right. Examination fees, uh, 10 CDs, uh, entertainment fees, library fees, SRC dues, sports dues, culture fees, co-curricular activities, ICT, national science and math quiz, science development, development levy, utilities, etc. Okay. In addition to this, the students are going to enjoy free meal. And the day students will also enjoy one hot meal. As we speak, the few schools that are enjoying the Northern Scholarship, and that covers only dining hall, the food they eat. Mm. From Jerry Rollins' time up till now, we've been having problems. The last time the students came home, the hairs told us that they were not going to open the schools because they had no money. This was in the northern region? Northern region, mm. upper east and upper west. Mm. And so if these three regions with numbers that are largely insignificant, mm -hmm. the state has a problem. And all the presidents that have ruled this country from 1992 till now have had problems solving that. And government comes to tell us, look, we will feed all students. Mm. I have a very big problem with that. Let's not forget even national health insurance levy. There are clear cut ways of funding the health insurance. Mm. I'm sure you're watching, you paid health insurance for it. But we have problems. Actually, I didn't buy it in Ghana. Oh, okay. You are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for my spectacle. <laughs> we have problems sorting that out. Mm. The World Bank thing is good, but is that sustainable? Mm. So let's not just look at it today. How are we going to ensure that? We sustain this. But Mind is it clear you to you what we're going to, what, what we're in for as a country? I mean, as a news person, is it is this clear to you? It's clear to me. It is. It's clear to me. For me, if but we not are everybody said, will not be covered. everybody will be covered. I, that's why I have a problem. Okay. If I go to school mm. for one reason or the other, I fail and I'm repeated. Why should that be a crime? Well, maybe that is supposed to encourage people to learn so yes, that they don't Yes, but we know there, there are so many reasons. Somebody can have a psychological problem at home. Mm. He or she will not tell you. Okay. And the person will feel, and you All think right. because the person is being repeated, the yeah. scholarship will not cover the person. Mind you, we are, people are arguing that, look, those who should be at the center should be the very poor. And we know where the poor come from. When I went to Yapimson LA Primary School, P1 to P6, only teacher Samoa was teaching us. <laughs> one teacher. P6A were about 92 <laughs> students. One teacher mm. from P1 to P6. I'm talking about wow. the P6A. So how do you expect children from such schools? To compete with people to compete from uh, all the big schools. Uh, and, and, and it is possible that somebody from, from iPads, those schools. Where they're using to learn. If such a student should get the opportunity, I remember when I left the atmosphere and I went to Dr. Sound, the first term, the highest I had was 45. And they even entered 35. By second term, third term, I topped some of the subjects. Mm. So if you had failed me first term, and I wouldn't you have wouldn't money give to continue, you wouldn't, ha you wouldn't have, have had a second me. chance. Yes. To, so to I have to make it. some problem with that. Okay. If you fail in life, it is not enough. Give the person the opportunity. Because for some people, when they fail today, it doesn't mean they will not pass they will tomorrow. Not, right, very well. So such people, they should have a second look at it. Then the technical and vocational aspect, mm. they should take a second look at that as well. Okay. But for the teacher motivation, uh, well, it's a big thing.
<laughs> teacher motivation. Okay. I, I think we should make time to talk about the, this, this particular topic again uh, one, 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 once more. But, Eddie, you, you, I'm sure you will take your children to the, to the best of schools. So if your children won't go to Yepim so early <laughs> and, and be taught <laughs> by a teacher, Certainly, certainly, not. Uh, certainly, <laughs> not. <laughs> certainly not. But is it clear to you? What are your thoughts on on this? In 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 what six weeks? Six weeks. We're, 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 well, we'll I want to, to borrow the, the words of the Greek minister who said Amiwem has been defeated. Mm -hmm. I think the rationale behind free SHS has been defeated. Why do you say so? It's been defeated because um, the education minister. You know, free edu uh, education is is good. It's a good mm. thing. Free dear, yeah. Free dear, yeah. <laughs> but the. <laughs> The education minister has no not been truthful. <laughs> I mean, government has not been truthful with uh -huh. us because this is not free SHS. This is a scholarship scheme. Okay, so you stand by the scholarship I, scheme. I, I am clear in my mind that what they are going to implement, implement is, is free well. scholarship. Or let's say scholarship for some selected brilliant <laughs> Brilliant but needy students. Brilliant but needy <laughs> students. It's a scholarship. It, is, it has yeah. nothing to do with ameliorating the, the mm. plight of the poor, oh, poor. Mm. as put succinctly in the NPP's mani manifesto. manifesto. What they told us was that it was going to be available to every child. Every Ghanaian child. Yes. Right. So, I mean, I think that the, this, the, the core people who are supposed to be targeted by this very um, policy are not going to benefit, and that is uh, quite unfortunate. Because they are likely to fail. Because they are likely to fail. Because of the circumstances under which they're being... Uh, forced to learn. We have been told we are in this country when uh, pupils in JHS who are supposed to write BEC in some parts of the northern region because of conflict they couldn't go and write. Mm. These are people who don't have the luxury of having light 24 hours to learn. Mm. They don't have the luxury because look at the situations they find themselves in. They wouldn't have the opportunity because they will not pass and have this kind mm. of criteria met. So and that's, that is, why, that is that's why you say it's defeated. It's defeated and it's a scholarship scheme for uh, brilliant but needy Brilliant but needy students. students. And these needy students, of course, they are the people who um, don't have, most of the time, the right environment within which to learn to pass in the first place. Okay, so once it is clear to us, uh, we know George, it's clear to George, he knows what this is about. Um, he thinks that there are a few things to be looked at again. Hopefully they will. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's yeah, a journey. Yeah, the minister has given the indication. In fact, it's one of that the ministers I admire so much, Dr. Oh. Opoku Plante. Oh, if sorry. you have issues, come up with them. And, and then so, they'll, so they'll he, he's that accommodating. I, I don't see, see him as... Were you impressed at the press briefing they had at the Ministry of Information? Well, unfortunately, because maybe I admire the minister, so far, so whatever it's he has said... It's uh, clouded yeah, your, possibly. your views, I yeah, see. So I think <laughs> he convinces. Uh -huh. the, the doctor will you, you have a bias for, for, for him? I want to believe so. Ah. so I, I think that you should have been just truthful and tell Ghanaians that, look, there's no, we don't have Im enough money enough to money fund at this point. This. So let's start it from this point. Which would then I, begin to sound bad. like the NDC. What the, then it will begin to sound like what the NDC no, 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 said. No. You see, Progressively free. free. Fair enough. This is scholarship scheme. It is not free uh, uh, SHS. <laughs> so the minister should have told us that, look, we told you that we're going to make it available to mm. every child in Ghana. But unfortunately, this is the amount we have. Yeah. It cannot cater for it. So let's this start with this. Okay. I mean, we, I mean, it's good to start people from somewhere. People understand, right? Yeah, people will understand. I mean, it's good to but try. But then politically, it will be suicidal. It won't, it won't be uh, suicidal. Really? Because I think that um, at least trying to do something is better than not starting at all. Ha. Anyway. It will be interesting because if you come and say, well, we don't have money, mind you, the, op the NDC, which is their biggest uh, opposition, of course, has been um, making a lot of, giving a lot of reasons why they can't do what they said they would do. So for you to come back and tell the people of Ghana that, yes, we said we'll do this, but upon, uh, uh, you know, but uh, 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 upon our encounter with the reality, we realize that we won't be able to do it, and then that's going to be politically suicidal. That's why perhaps they have not done so. There's nothing wrong with, I mean, telling Ghanaians the truth, because subtly, that is what you are telling us. It's a scholarship. Okay. And it's going to be based on who does what. You pass well, and you are qualified. Mm. It is not because you are poor. But the, 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 the underpinning 
uh, rationale behind free SHS was to what have been the allow everybody who is poor to benefit to from go it. To school. Yeah. Well, I, I, apparently we have only five minutes. Uh, but well, let's talk about recruiting party supporters. Yesterday, the NPP Greater Accra uh, held its 2017 delegates conference. And one of the issues that stood out was the fact that the, uh, uh, was preferential treatment for party supporters during recruitment. And um, here, Samir Rukup uh, and John Boydu on why they think so. If they are sending appointments, there are others that didn't believe that the MVP can deliver. There are others when Nana Adodankwa Okufuadu over the years was saying that there's a need for us to have free SHS. There are others that didn't believe. So if now we are implementing it and there will be one hot meal, one hot meal per school, you want me to give the contract to an NDC person who didn't believe it? No. We will give it to somebody who believes in the program and policy so that we can deliver our uh, objective. That's all that we are talking about. So it is, for instance, then DC had, had implemented the school feeding program for some time now. People are complaining about it. Their term of office has ended. The term has ended. So if they are recruiting different caterers, obviously, and before as we are, we even know how to cook better. You understand? So there's nothing wrong in getting our people to be part of this government program. Especially where our people are the ones who believe in Akufuado's vision, who believe in the MPP vision. To our MPP, the issue is that not all of us can be government appointees. But it's important that while we support our government appointees, they must also take care of us well well. There is no threat that if you are recruiting people, you should not recruit your party people first. Justification right there. Uh, let's go straight to the point. We don't have a lot of time. Um, uh, Robert George. Well, I, I, to the extent that they are party officials, <laughs> they are right. Remember, okay. the party is different from the government. The president ruled on the party to become president. Okay. And after becoming president, he said he is now father for all. And as a party, whether the president will continue to be there or not, it depends on the party. Okay. And so it is the duty of the party to ensure that its members are taken care of. It is not a problem like they see. NDC has complained. When Kunadu Rawlings and others were saying they've neglected the grassroots. Who are the grassroots? It's the same thing they are talking about. Okay. So the party, there's nothing wrong with the party doing that, what they're doing, mm. but there will be everything wrong if the government is doing that. Well, <laughs> the party and the government, it's a very thin line between the thin two. Thin line. But we don't have a lot of time, Eddie. What are your thoughts? I think we are, we, are, we are in for something very dangerous for our country. What we are doing now is generational party employment. That is mm. what we are doing. We are creating jobs, op job opportunities for party people when a new government comes to power. Mm. When there's a change in government, this whole, I mean, this number of people will lose their jobs and then we'll have a different generation also taking right. over. It is a, it's a challenge for us. And it is very dangerous if you keep doing this thing. What he was talking about, I don't agree with him. I don't agree with him because he's just going to ensure that they are going to create a generation of employment, kind of employment for mm. MPP supporters, and when MPP loses the party, the, uh, the election the in the next elections, the NDC, the NDC will also come in with a different crop of people. Wh which is why we have that issue of the Delta Force, the Invincible Forces, you know, g taking over toll booths, etc. And recently, the, in the northern region, in Yendi, somewhere in Yendi, they went um, uh, attacking workers on the uh, Eastern Corridor Road, asking people for recruitment. toll booths, the seized right. toilets, and all that. I mean, it's dangerous for our our country where we know that but they helped them to get into power no but you don't you don't do you do it when the person has the competency to handle it okay so if you, you that's what i was saying generational party employment so the only you know that you have a four-year mandate they've employed you you enjoy the next four years the next four you, years you, when you, some, you leave another person somebody else comes okay in. okay so what, what we just have to wrap up unfortunately we won't be able to touch base with uh forgive america's uh, documentary about living with the dead Maybe another time we'll be able to do that. But quick one, give the uh, Imanol Manukre answer says IDEC has issued a rejoinder 
subsequent to the referred reportage, your panelist, Papa Kwabi, apparently is not abreast with the joint statement issued by IDEC and other and one other CSO. Emmanuel and Nimil says, Gifty, I don't think your panelists are being fair to their great minister. <laughs> he has done a lot and needs to be commended. Are they saying if the EC boss is culpable, she should be left in office? Free SHS is good, but I believe it should be reserved for those who cannot afford their fees. There's still a lot more messages. I, I'll be able to take them now because of time. But thank you so much for your contribution uh, uh, and for letting us know your thoughts. Uh, this has been Editors Forum. I'm not sure we have time for quick words, but... I've been here with Edward Kwabi. Edward Kwabi is editor at TV3. His, like I said, looking at him alone makes me want to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> George Asekere is host of Behind the News, GBC Radio. Thank you very much, uh, George, for coming. My name, of course, is Gifty and Dr. produced by uh, Forgive America. David Babu on, um, as director. Jata on uh, camera. I've forgotten all the other names. <laughs> but all, all, uh, guys... Thank you very much for supporting uh, the production. In less than 30 minutes, we bring you Joy News Prime. Please stay with us.